Now this is where the fun really starts. But don't stress. I'm gonna show you how, no matter how complex a differentiation problem looks, you can solve it in just three simple steps so you can smash it out of the park. Ready? Let's break it down. The three steps are, step one, split up, step two, set up, step three, differentiate. Just remember it like a rhythm. Split up, set up, and differentiate. All right, let's start with step one, split up. We're going to do this using the following example. When differentiating, we can split the expression at plus and minus signs, but only if the plus or minus is a true term separator. How do you know when a plus or minus is a term separator? A plus or minus will only separate terms if it is not inside any of the following. A bracket, a root, a fraction, or an exponent. Look at our example. We can see that at the following plus and minus signs, we cannot split because they are either inside brackets, part of a fraction, or inside an exponent. But at the following plus and minus signs, we can split because they're not part of brackets, roots, fractions, or exponents. So at these signs, we split the expression. Now what split up means for us is that we're going to differentiate each of those parts separately. So we've already taken a much more complex expression and broken it down into simpler, smaller pieces. And just like that, split up is complete. The second step in our differentiation game plan is set up. Now, what we do in this step is set up the structure for how we're going to differentiate. Very important, we're not differentiating yet. We're just laying out the structure. And that structure depends on what the x looks like in each term. So the way the x looks in each term determines which structure we're going to use. There are four different ways x can appear. Way 1, there's only one x. Way 2, there are two x's being multiplied. Way 3, there are two x's being divided. And way 4, the x is in the exponent. Let's now look at our sum to identify which structures we're dealing with. This was our answer from step one, split up. And now we're gonna look at each term to see what the x looks like. We can see that the first term has just one x. The second term has two x's being multiplied. The third term has two x's being divided. And in the last term, we have an x up in the air. In other words, in the exponent. So we can see it's actually easy to identify which of the four types a term fits into, just by looking at what the x looks like. Let's break down each of the four types to see which structure we're going to use for each. What's super important to remember here is that the structure is just a fixed pattern that we follow. These patterns don't change, they always stay the same. So you need to learn them off by heart for differentiation. It might look worse than it really is, but trust me, it gets easier the more you practice it. All right, let's start. For the first one, where we have just a single x, there's no structure we need to set up. It stays exactly the way it is for step three. For the second, third, and fourth types, we have structures that we need to set up before we can move on to step three of our game plan, which is to differentiate. The structures look like this when we have two x's being multiplied, when we have two x's being divided, and when the x is up in the air in an exponent. Let's now build these structures using our example. We've already identified that in our first term, we have just one x. So if we look at the structure, we'll see that when there's only one x, there's no special setup needed. It just gets carried over exactly as it is. Now for our second term, we can see we have two x's being multiplied, so this is the structure we need to set up. Look carefully at how the structure works. We're going to differentiate the first bracket and multiply it by the second bracket, as is. Then we add, and now we differentiate the second bracket and multiply it by the first bracket, just as it is. Remember, this structure always stays the same whenever we have two x's being multiplied. In our third term, we can see we have two x's being divided. So the structure we're going to set up looks like this. 
Again, look carefully at how we write the structure, because these structures never change. It's just a pattern we follow. So we differentiate the top bracket and multiply it by the bottom bracket, as is. Then we subtract. And now we differentiate the bottom bracket and multiply it by the top bracket, just as it is. All of this goes over the square of the bottom bracket. Now for our last term, we can see that the x is in the exponent. So the structure we need to set up looks like this. Remember, this structure is just a fixed pattern that always works whenever the x is in the exponent. For this structure, we take the base and exponent just as they are. Then we multiply by the derivative of the power, and then we multiply again by the natural log of the base. And with that, our second step, set up, is complete. Now for our third and final step, and this is where we actually differentiate. What we do here first is identify exactly what we need to differentiate from the structure we set up in step two. So we can now see that we need to differentiate each of the following parts from our setup structure. We only differentiate the parts of our structure that have d dx stuck to them. Now to differentiate successfully in this step, we use something I call the cupcake method to help us tell the difference between a simple and a composite function. This is super important because the way we differentiate a simple function is very different from how we differentiate a composite one. So what's the difference between a composite and a simple function? And what on earth does that have to do with a cupcake? Well, spotting the difference is actually really easy. A composite function will have a bracket raised to some power. In simple functions, you'll never see a bracket raised to a power. As we can see in the examples, in the first one, we see a bracket, but there's no power on it. That makes it a simple function. In the second example, we can clearly see a bracket that's raised to a power, and that makes it a composite function. So what on earth does this have to do with cupcakes? Let's explain it like this. Let's take those exact same two examples and now ask the question, can we simplify them? If we look at the first one, we'll see that when we try to simplify it, there's nothing more we can do. The expression is already in its simplest form. That's why when a sum has a bracket with no power, it's already as simple as it gets. What you see is what you get. Just like a normal cupcake, there's nothing hidden inside. But if we look at the second example and try to simplify it, we know that the power tells us how many times we need to multiply the bracket by itself. So in this case, if we expand the bracket, we'll get the following answer. So we can see that because it was a bracket raised to a power, it means there were x's inside the bracket that we couldn't see at first. They were hidden, just like a cupcake with a surprise center. You have to take a bite before you can see what's inside. These hidden x's have big implications for differentiation, because when we differentiate, we have to differentiate all the x's, even the ones that are hidden inside. So that's our cupcake story. Let's sum it up. When we get to step three of our game plan, where we actually start differentiating, we're going to come across two types of functions, simple functions and composite functions. We need to be able to tell them apart because the way we differentiate them is completely different. Luckily, identifying them is easy. We just look at the brackets. If it's just a normal bracket, it's a simple function like a plain cupcake, what you see is what you get. But if it's a composite function, it'll be a bracket raised to a power. And as we've seen, the moment a bracket is raised to a power, there are x's hiding inside, x's that we can't see, but that we still have to differentiate, just like a cupcake with a hidden center. So now let's go back to our example and figure out, what type of cupcake are we dealing with? Just remember, all we're checking is, does the bracket have a power? Then it's a composite function. No power on the bracket. Then it's a simple function. So in our example, we can see that the following differentiations are simple functions because there's no bracket raised to a power. But if we look at this one, we'll see that it's a composite function. 
because it's a bracket that's been raised to a power. So now that we've identified them, the next question is, how do we differentiate simple functions and how do we differentiate composite functions? For simple functions, we use the circle trick, like we saw in our previous videos. In other words, our usual shortcut method for differentiation. But for a composite function, we now need a new method of differentiation to make sure we catch all the x's. Because we know there are x's hiding inside. And this new method of differentiation is called the chain method. Let's see how it works. As we've already established, we use the chain rule for composite functions so that we can differentiate all the hidden x's inside the center of the cupcake. So how does the chain rule work? The chain rule isn't difficult. It's just another fixed pattern we follow, and it works like this. We take the power of the bracket and multiply it in front of the bracket. Important, the inside of the bracket stays the same. Then we subtract one from the power. And finally, we multiply by the derivative of the inside of the bracket. Let's look at our example to see this in action. We can see we've got a composite function because the bracket is raised to a power, so we use the chain rule. We start by multiplying the power in front of the bracket. The bracket stays exactly the same. Then we subtract one from the power. And finally, we multiply by the derivative of what's inside the bracket. All that's left for us to do after that is to simplify everything and then do the normal differentiation using the circle method. And just like that, we've finished differentiating the composite function. If you've made it this far in the video, well done. Now all that's left is to finish the sum. So let's start by differentiating all these simple functions using our usual circle method. Once you've done that, you should get the following answers. Pause the video and see if you get the same answers. Very important. If you're struggling at all with the circle differentiation method, make sure to go back to the previous videos where we broke the circle method down step by step because you're going to use it all the time when differentiating simple functions. So we've now finished all our simple functions, which means we can plug the answers we just got back into their places. Next up, we need to tackle the composite function, the one where the bracket had a power. And to do a composite function, we use the chain rule. So for the chain rule, we take the power, which is 12, and we multiply it by the bracket. The bracket stays exactly the same. Then we subtract one from the power. And finally, we multiply by the derivative of the bracket. After that, we simplify everything. And this is the answer we get. We've now finished differentiating. All that's left is to simplify everything as far as we can. Once we plug in all our differentiated parts, it looks like this. Now we just clean up the easy stuff, all the simplifications that are quick and obvious. Very important, we only simplify the parts that are easy. Like in this sum, you'll see that only this part is easy to simplify. The rest stays exactly the way it is. And that's it. You're done. Well done. With these three steps, you'll be able to tackle any differentiation problem successfully because it gives you a solid game plan. Stick to the game plan because it's really easy to get lost in differentiation. But if you follow this structured approach, you'll see just how much easier it becomes. We touched on a lot of concepts in this video. So my advice, watch the video a few times to make sure you really see the, the bigger picture. In the description of this video, you'll also find a link to our full ebook course, where everything is broken down for you step by step, along with cheat sheets you can print out and keep next to you while differentiating, which will honestly help you a lot. Join us in the next video, where we'll look at how to differentiate trig functions, as well as logs, natural logs, and the Euler constant. It's really not that hard, because it still follows the same game plan. Winging calculus is like winging a parachute jump, fun until the ground shows up. Ditch the 30 open YouTube tabs at 2 a.m. trying to integrate and grab my ebook course, step-by-step -step fixes and shortcuts. Cheaper than your monthly coffee bill and way easier than explaining a flatlining GPA. Course link in the description.
If this helped, smash like and subscribe. See you next time. Cheers.